Hey guys, welcome to the second video in my DIY Cloud Backup 2021 series. In this episode, we're going to do a quick base install of Proxmox and do some small basic install steps and then set up some basic ZFS storage. There's a lot of basic here. And while I do that on screen, I'm going to talk about the client plus server software side of this DIY Cloud Backup project. Basically, the software tools I will be using to make this whole setup function in a way that there can never be any doubt if your data is safe and secure. Right, let's take a look. So, again, quick reminder, you'll be seeing me install Proxmox and configure storage and such well, I'll be talking about something else. I've done a Proxmox install tutorial and article before. Check that out uh, over here or linked in the description. What I wanted to talk about in this video is the whole setup. So basically the design and the idea behind it. I wanted something that was designed from the ground up with one important idea in mind, as I mentioned in the intro. It should never be possible to question the security of the data you upload in your backups. It shouldn't make a difference if you just use this backup service alone or share it with friends. It should be impossible by design to even question if somebody else looked at your data. If you're sharing a box like this with friends, even having to ask or think about that question is something that can ruin friendships. So let's make sure to prevent that. Now, the solution to this is actually quite straightforward. The client-side backup needs to support something called client-side encryption, where the key is only stored on the client. That way, the backup server administrator doesn't need to know this key and thus can never do anything with the backups or rather the data inside of your backups because, well, he can't open the archives because it doesn't have the encryption key. And well, to also quickly highlight I wanted the backup client to have additional features such as client-side deduplication. Deduplication helps with reducing the amount of data that needs to be transferred as much as possible. Multi-OS support, in my case Linux, like my Proxmox hosts, and Windows, and well, I prefer it to be reasonably resource efficient if possible. With all that in mind, in my 2017 series I selected Duplicati 2. And although on paper it has a lot of features, in reality, me and my friends found the software to be unreliable. Often a backup archive would become suddenly broken or corrupt, and it turned out that trying to fix that archive was a process of often weeks, with sometimes still no positive results and the inability to restore any backup from it anymore. So that just wasn't acceptable anymore. It's too bad, really, because Duplicati 2 did a lot of things right, having a nice GUI, reporting, etc. But we just couldn't trust it, and the issues were fundamentally baked into the software, so weren't going to get fixed anytime soon either. So about after a year, we left it behind. After an extensive search and trying out lots of client, even paid ones that do not have a pay per terabyte limit, in the end, we've settled for an open source backup tool called Restic. It has client-side deduplication, client-side encryption, and is available for lots of operating systems. Sadly, it's command line only, but in my opinion, there currently just isn't a better option out there. Once you use it for a little bit, its command structure turns out to be quite simple, and the program itself is also very lightweight and doesn't demand giant system resources even if you're trying to back up many terabytes of data. So that is the client side sorted. In a future episode in this series, we'll be taking a very close look at Restic and setting it up together to run backups, do some restores and things like that. So let's move on to the second part of the equation. Although Restic supports lots of different storage backends, such as SIFS, or NFS, FTP, or for instance, Blackblaze B2, AWS, Azure, we're not going to use any of those since we're building our own cloud. Or well, actually, we will be using a little bit of AWS technology. Designing this setup, I always had multi-tenancy in mind. I wanted to be able to create environments which were pretty much 
completely isolated per user. So in 2017, my search ended up with a little program called Minio. Nowadays, it's a lot more well-known program than it was then, but Minio is a little storage daemon you can run on your server to create an Amazon S3 compatible object storage server. This was ideal for how I wanted to run the server, since it meant I could run a Minio daemon per user, keeping everything completely isolated. Minio is also written from the ground up to deal with giant archives, and my little 30 terabyte of effective storage is nothing for it. Being S3 compatible, it allows a lot of clients to talk to it, and also fully does away with any username or password combination, which could easily get hacked. And well, now in 2021, I see no reason to change this. Minio has been working excellent, it's perfectly stable, and performance is certainly more than enough to be able to saturate the internet line. No problems there, so no reason to change that part of the setup at this time. And then the last step of the puzzle is ZFS. I love ZFS. People who've been following my channel know I love ZFS. The storage location will be on a ZFS Z-RAID 2 with five disks. Yes, that'll eat up 20 terabyte in for parity of my 50 terabyte total, giving me 30 terabytes effectively. But since keeping my data is most important for this server, that is well worth it in my opinion. And although Minio now offers a lot of fancy storage options using erasure coding and stuff like that, it still misses a feature I need for this server, and that is the ability to set quotas. Again, that multi tenancy part. ZFS does offer this, and using these quotas we can make sure we can limit a tenant to a set maximum so they can't mess it up for others. So basically, in a nutshell, we're going to be using Restic as our backup client, which will write client-side encrypted and deduplicated data to an S3 server and bucket. A single tenant can have multiple buckets to arrange their own backups, basically, which will then be stored on a ZFS pool, which has options for quotas to limit users to, well, what they're allowed to use. Now, I hope this explanation makes some kind of sense. If not, make sure to take a look at my 2017 articles too, which I'll have linked in the description. While we were talking, our server is done installing, storage is created and online, so the next part of this series will be setting up the ZFS file system a little bit more and then installing Minio on the server, including auto start and everything that's needed so that it's ready to receive client backups. During that setup, I'll also highlight more about the multi-tenancy part of it. And uh, I think I'm also gonna tackle the noise because it's in the background right now, of the server by replacing all the fans with Noctua and well, seeing what that does with disk temperature and stuff like that. So I hope you liked the video, you know, press the button and see you back again for the next part. Bye-bye.